footage that you gave Tucker Carlson last night. He went on, said this was a mostly peaceful chaos, as he said. He downplayed Brian Sicknick's death, said it was not related to January 6th, said this was not an insurrection. Do you regret giving him this footage so he could whitewash the events of that day? No. Um, I, I said at the very beginning, transparency. And so what I wanted to produce for everybody is exactly what I said, that people could actually look at it and see what's gone on that day. So. But why, so but why, but Mr. Why Speaker? Really that was Kevin McCarthy, and he's doubling down after providing over 44,000 hours of confidential January 6th surveillance footage to Fox News host Tucker Carlson. McCarthy has been taking heat from all sides for his irresponsible action, but he only had this to say. Would you agree with this portrayal of what happened then? Look, each person can come up with their own conclusion, but I, what I just wanted to make sure is I had transparency. Do you believe Because I know in CNN, I mean, I had here where you guys actually broke where we were. This was a secret location, Fort McLaren. I don't know if you got concerned by that. I don't even know from a point of view of security if we could ever be taken there again. But when you broke that at CNN, that was a real concern to a lot of people. That's right. McCarthy gave confidential video footage to one of the country's loudest election deniers. Also, they could help Americans understand what really happened on January 6th. I don't know. If this sounds like a flimsy excuse, you're right, because literally no one is believing it. See, McCarthy's argument doesn't actually make much sense. Sure, he did pledge to release January 6th footage to the American public. But here's the thing. He didn't actually do that. Fox News has refused to release the footage to the public, except in snippets Tucker Carlson decides to edit and release. And Tucker's wasted no time turning that video footage into a multi-night rant about how January 6th wasn't actually an attack on the Capitol. And Tucker is getting bolder than ever. Take this monologue from just a couple days ago. It was underway. The protesters were angry. They believed that the election they had just voted in had been unfairly conducted. And they were right. In retrospect, it is clear the 2020 election was a grave betrayal of American democracy. Given the facts that have since emerged about that election, no honest person can deny it. It's important to remind you here that Tucker Carlson does not believe the 2020 election was stolen. That much has been proven through documents released in Dominion Voting Systems' lawsuit against Fox News. In text messages that will serve as evidence in the trial, Carlson repeatedly confirms he knows election deniers are crazy. In text to fellow news ghoul Laura Ingram, Tucker jokes about how unserious election deniers like Rudy Giuliani are. Good thing Tucker doesn't care about what's actually true. And that lawsuit may be part of why Fox News seems to be going even crazier than usual. Fox is facing its toughest legal fight ever, and Rupert Murdoch has huge incentive to keep his viewers' eyes off that messy lawsuit. If that means letting Tucker Carlson spew election lies, well, that's just the cost of doing business. But it wasn't that long ago that a young journalist was warning the American people about the risks of media outlets serving as propaganda arms for political parties. His name? Tucker Carlson. The electorate's confidence in the news being real is all important. You see this when you go to other countries that don't have a history or a tradition of a straightforward, honest press, like I don't know, places like Pakistan, where I've spent a lot of time, where the press has always been dishonest, always every newspaper is an organ of a political movement uh, or other. And people have come over time to become really cynical about the press. They don't believe anything that is written in newspapers because they assume all of it is just another man's view. All of it is bias. At the time, Tucker seemed to think that these were bad things. In fact, now it looks like he was just providing his future self with a roadmap for destroying faith in America's public institutions. Good going. And make no mistake, Tuck Tuck realizes exactly what happens when you start pumping out propaganda and his remarks are almost haunting given the current chaos at Fox News. Here's more. And so in the absence of any universally recognized standard or source of news, what happens? Well, rumors take the place of news. And so ultimately you have an electorate that is really poorly informed and incredibly suspicious. And in that environment, all sorts of crazy conspiracy theories bloom and take the place of facts. So where does this end? The MAGA right and folks like Tucker have been pretty clear about where they'd like. 
It ends with putting House January 6th committee members on trial for treason. Yeah, not the insurrectionists, but the lawmakers. Trump demands January 6th committee members are tried for treason, says political hacks and thugs on panel should be thrown in jail for refusing to show videos aired by Tucker Carlson. I think I'm in total 100% agreement with that. If you want to whip up Americans into believing January 6th was just some big conspiracy, well, Fox News is giving a masterclass in propaganda. And of course, Donald Trump is prepared to manipulate that anger to his own ends. In this case, that means jailing his political opponents. One thing is undeniable. Fox News has gone off the rails, even by their own wingnut standards. Now the network's hosts are trying their biggest brainwash yet, convincing you that January 6th never happened. And speaking of upsetting things, Kenosha killer Kyle Rittenhouse is back on TV, and he's wondering if you can spare a few bucks. Check out this video to learn how crybaby Kyle got himself into this mess.